Welcome to the Grosse Ile Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission. Call this meeting to order and ask everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we are all here this evening. Uh, is there any additions or deletions to the agenda as presented? I would like to just make comment about the the uh, August 22nd business. August 22nd? Yes. Yeah. Um, August 22nd, is there something on the agenda for August? Are you talking about well, the, uh, the board? Well, you've got to walk the path, but there's there's another thing in there that's oh, okay. also happening that day, and it's called garage sales. So okay, yeah, we, we, we can so, add that in there. So I want to I want to add garage sales to that. I'd like to uh, add um, Alan Bass. Okay. Can we back up a little bit, please? Sure, sir. Well, as we um, added the, the garage sale, is, is that our island garage sale day? Yes. Is that what that is? Okay. Yes. Which means it's going to be one busy island that day. Yeah. <laughs> It's not a good day to be biking, I'll tell you that. Wow. Because? Because there's rabid garage sailors out there parking everywhere. And <laughs> no, well, you know, I know where they're, I know where they're, 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 they're warriors. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. Any other additions or deletions to the agenda? Right, can I get a motion to accept it? I'll make a motion. Okay. Can I get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Uh, should have also received it within uh, either in the meeting packet or via email the uh, meeting minutes from last month. Is there any comments specifically on those meeting minutes? Yeah, um, it's not long ago. It's not long ago. Um, it's not long ago. 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 Any other comments? Okay. Um, can I get a motion to approve the meeting minutes with the uh, change of lazy roll to lazy ride? So moved. Uh, Aaron and Jane? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Uh, one last thing I wanted to add about the meeting minutes is those were prepared by Mr. Albright, Mr. Rob Albright, and uh, his last meeting was last month's. So um, I wanted to first thank him for stepping up and taking care of those meeting minutes for us. It was greatly needed. Uh, but also, you know, I wanted to personally thank him for all his years of service. Um, I know he did more than four years, you know, close to five years being on this specific commission as well as the committee that uh, came before it. So he put in a lot of time and he's you know, contributed to a lot of different projects. And I just you know, want to again you know, thank him for his service. Moving on, we have open public comment. We have uh, a couple folks here in the audience. Is anyone interested in introducing themselves at this time? All right. Um, we move into old business, uh, brick installation. Well, in, last month we uh, you know, said that the fountain was going to be going out and we were going to be looking at some extra bricks to fill in the, uh, the project. Any status updates on that? The fountain will be installed. Is this working? Yeah. The fountain will be installed next week. And I've talked to the person who did the bricks last fall. He's going to pull and reset the bricks. And uh, hopefully... Uh, we'll have any extra bricks that were ordered at that point, and he will make the size of the uh, the patio there appropriate to fit all of the bricks that we have. Uh, he has not charged us anything for this work at this point, although he did give us an estimate last fall. Says he won't be satisfied until we're satisfied, and he doesn't like the way it looks either. Mm -hmm. So, what was the estimate for that work? Uh, as I recall, it was like fifteen hundred dollars. Should be uh, should be done. Put some more sand in place to to settle it out. And 
I think he's going to talk to our, our DPW to take some of those humps away from the sides of it to make it look a little bit more more pleasant. Looks like it was dug out there right now. So all he's got to do is corner John in the backhoe. Aaron, have you heard from Ann or anyone else about the actual profit that was made on the fundraiser? Um, I think I gave some numbers that were my estimate last time. Um, I have not heard from Ann yet on the official numbers. Okay. Make sure we follow up with her on that. Mm. Okay. Also, as a reminder, um, I spoke in the past about Ralph Rondo installing a marble bench there as a memorial to his parents. Uh, they're still working on the project, but they're going to have to install a pad and put that on because of its weight. Um, we'll talk about that as I get more information, and that's a future project at the Fountain site. Okay. Anything else about the, uh, the bricks or the fountain? Okay, moving on. Bike to school day. Um, Aaron, do you want to lead off the conversation? Uh, sure. Again, to remind everyone at home, Bike to School Day is May 6th with the rain day May 8th. It is for, well, we are endorsing the event for Meridian and for uh, the middle school. I'm sure there are other parents and families out there who will probably be riding to Park Lane. Um, I spoke with the police department, so they're aware, and they will have anybody extra out that they can. Um, I'm working with PAT and um, still trying to get in contact with PTO. Um, PAT will support us. They will have some volunteers out there um, to we'll administer raffle tickets because they're also generously donating some gift cards again this year. Um, and then with other things, you know, sometimes the kids need help finding a place to put their bikes, um, things like that. Jane has arranged for um, some bike racks, extra bike racks to be moved because I don't know if you saw last year. It was pretty popular and there's a lot of overflow of bikes. Um, right now we don't have any official bike trains. Um, I think people are hesitant just because if you have small children, um, any, you know, anything can change that morning. They don't want to be liable and I don't know how many people would trust their small children riding with a stranger, but I do encourage people at home um, to do unofficial bike trains out of your neighborhood. We saw a lot of that last year and if you know anybody um, who maybe lives off the island or the children who live far away from school, just ask them if they'd like to be part of your bike train. Mm -hmm. um, did I miss anything? Um, no, I think that's the update. I'll just add, uh, I did put out um, you know, an unofficial you know, email, the, uh, excuse me, news blast via the Groziel Walks and Bikes page. Mm -hmm. um, and that was carried on by Opportunity Groziel, so it's reached, I believe, 900 people thus far, and that's specifically for the, uh, the bike trains. So it explains it a little bit more detail of what it is, what it isn't. There's been some, you know, one comment saying, well, you know, why do we need bike trains? Can't kids bike to school? And I tried to explain to them that this is to try and encourage more children to be uh, biking to school. It's sort of like a, a, a stepping stone. So again, for those small children or for parents that aren't uh, feeling that comfortable about having their children ride alone at this time. But, uh, you know, so hopefully we will be getting a, a few more uh, you know, volunteers for that. And I, I forgot to thank Jane for the beautiful flyer and for promoting the event. Yeah. Uh, can we get that flyer up on the, uh, the TV screen? It's up. It's up. Yeah, I was with the, the cable. I didn't know if they were able to pull it up or not. So I'm not sure if it's showing or not, but either way, you know, Jane, great flyer. We greatly appreciate it. Um, you know, this information is already on Facebook. Um, so uh, that is getting the, the rounds as well. Um, I, I think it's a great piece because it couples together the Bike to School Day event along with the safety class, which I believe, Al, you're going to talk about now. Thank you, Brian. Again, Jim, <clears throat> this is a beautiful flyer you put together. I hope my class is as fun as the flyer looks. I don't want to let you down. Um, on May 2nd, Saturday morning, between 10 a.m. and 12 noon, we're going to have a free safety uh, workshop for bicycles. Um, we're going to concentrate on the operator of the bicycle, the bicycle itself, and then the roadways. Um, it'll be a fun class. Um, we're going to do further things uh, other than just teach you about safety. We're going to check on your helmets to make sure they're properly uh, uh, worn. They're not too tight, they're not too loose, they fit. Um, that's very important. That's probably the most important thing I'll do that day. 
um, we're going to register your bike for free. And that'll work in your benefit when you forget where your bike is and we find it. Uh, we can call you and say, hey, your bike's over at the school and you left it at the Centennial Farm. So please come to our class. It'll be May 2nd at the Centennial Farm Pavilion. It'll be outside, so it'll be lots of fun. We're going to have free water for you to drink. We encourage you to ride your bike there. Um, and we're going to give you a bike lock, a cable lock for your bike, so you can lock it if you choose to do so. Hope to see you there on Saturday. Al, is there any other uh, assistance that you need with the event? Well, we're going to have several people there to check helmets, to move things faster. Um, I'm still trying to get assistance from the police department. Maybe a dispatcher or, or a records clerk can help us with the bike registration because ultimately they oversee that. Okay. And then we're going to be checking helmets for proper fit and handing out bike locks. Great. So we're, we're going to go as fast as we can considering the amount of people we have. We hope that we can start at 10 and be done by noon. And then everybody can go for a nice bike ride. We don't have an alternate day if it rains, so we're going to be under the pavilion. If it, the weather gets too bad, we can go inside, but I, I'd like to stay outside, uh, provided we have fair weather. Mm -hmm. And you can move the bunch if you, if you have to under the pavilion. Yes, we will be sitting on the picnic tables under the mm -hmm. pavilion, so um, there will be shelter there for us. Uh, this is for all age groups. Uh, we're going to focus on the kids and teach them the basics for bike safety. And of course the parents, they're welcome to come and ask questions and uh, get involved. Uh, you know, I, I feel that if we have uh, kids there and the parents are also attending, they can also step up and help and get involved. Yeah. Great. <clears throat> and I'll be doing the thickers. And maybe they yes, can put that on the bike. Yes, we have. Uh, we're, we're trying to get a flyer from the uh, uh, League of Michigan Bicyclist, and um, we don't know if we'll get it before the class, but it's very informative, and if we can get that, we will be handing that out to the participants. So we hope that we'll get it before the second. Yeah. Uh, they're still dis uh, dispersing them out of Lansing, so uh, we're trying to get up there and get our share of them. Yeah. If not this Friday, I can do it next Wednesday. Okay. So I'm not going to give up. Gene, I may be able to get up there Thursday. I'm heading north on Thursday. So this Thursday or next Thursday? This Thursday. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll let you know. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Text me. For the folks at home, uh, the flyer that Al is referring to is a booklet called What Every Michigan Bicyclist Should Know. There's actually two different booklets that we'll be handing out. One is sent, you know, geared towards more of an adult audience, and the other one is geared towards more of a, a child audience. And it, it goes over, you know, a lot of detail about, you know, some of the things that we're learning at the safety class, but, you know, additionally, you know, a, a lot of you know, supplemental information. Um, and, you know, I know that we have, you know, 200 of each ordered, and they should be in Lansing as of either today or tomorrow. Um, and so you know, hopefully, you know, one of us will be able to go up to Lansing and pick it up to make sure that we have them in time. Um, the only other thing I was going to ask is, Depending on you know how well this thing is attended, if it's a, you know a rain day or if we have extra materials, perhaps we can do you know some supplemental stuff maybe at the, the Island Fest booth or something like that. If you know, maybe registering bikes there is just just an idea that I had right now. We can also have them at our commission meetings, and people could come here and, and see the meeting and get a free uh, pamphlet. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> you get a sticker too. <laughs> <laughs> what a deal. Thank you. Thank you, Al. <laughs> Next item is about the uh, website. So as everyone uh, here knows, but you know, for folks at home, we do have a, a web page on the Grozio website. And it's you know, specifically for BPAC, or the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission. And it's fallen out of date for a little bit. So you know, I've just made sure that I, I uh, was able to update some of that information and I was able to have you know, have to give a big shout out to Ted because he was on this very quickly so we have you know, the current roster up there we got rid of some of the older materials we now have a, uh, a bike map uh, a map of the, the bike paths up on there as well as um, some other information so you know 
if anyone ever has additional information that we should be putting up on there, feel free to email or you know, talk to any of us and we'll make sure we can get it up there. Um, next item is the Channels Magazine. Jane, do you want to take the lead on this one? Sure. Um, I had the opportunity to um, take over the channel and Brian and I got together and then we put together a list of things that we we're going to do for the rest of the year with one TBA for walk to school. Um, we, made, we made a deadline. Mm -hmm. So um, on the channels, uh, we have one page for the channels magazine. Uh, first part is explaining what our commission is, what we do ways for people to be a part of this commission, either at these meetings, be active on you know, the website, getting information there, um, by letting them know that we're going to be publishing periodic articles, conversing via email or traditional mail. Um, but also, as Jane mentioned, it has our special events that we're sponsoring, uh, and then a map of the bike paths. So you know, all this information has been accurately reflected. I know there were some changes. Uh, I just talked with uh, Carol uh, last week, and she said that you know, Grozy Old Township Hall is a perfect place uh, to be a trailhead, so people are, will officially be allowed to park there in order to get on the, the bike path across the street on Grow Road. Um, so hats off to Jane on this. I appreciate all of your hard work on it. Holly, did you have a comment, sir? No, not on this. Okay. All right. Moving on, um, I have a spot here for the mayor's challenge. I know last month I explained a little bit about this, uh, sent some uh, links via email, and Wally, well, I believe you said that uh, Mr. Loftus was already aware of this, so I was just wondering if there has been any updates on the mayor's challenge, if Grozeal is considering yeah, Honestly, he has not. Okay. And I have sent him one or two messages about it, and, you know, guy gets busy. Yeah. Uh, this may not be the squeakiest wheel he's got to grease, but... Uh, it seems to me that several of the things that we do as a committee uh, are very applicable to what I saw in the Mayor's Challenge in order to, to get the recognition from it. So I'll, I'm going to have to talk to Ann more about bricks. I may as well talk to Brian about uh, the uh, Mayor's Challenge. Okay. I'll do both. Thank you, sir. Okay. Next event is you as well, sir. Poduro and uh, the Walk the Path event and garage sales. Uh, it's Barrow Dealer, all right? No, that's all the French I know. <laughs> I know Grozeal, and that's about it. De Trois. Grozeal, is that the way it's pronounced? <laughs> that's, uh, there, there are very many different variations of both. But Barrow Dealer is, as I understand it, the word for warrior in French. Uh, this is a program that's an inaugural biking event. Wayne State's big on biking. As a matter of fact, we got a bike to work day on May 15th. And uh, I only grabbed one little brochure of it to show you. But uh, when it comes down to the Bear Do and Walk the Path event, as you know, Tom Malveso and I have worked together last year on the Walk the Path event. And so when I found out the the Barrow Doer was going to happen on August 22nd, and that most people did not want us to have to walk the path as early as we did because it kind of conflicted with all of the, the work that's going on for Island Fest or the, the afterglow from it. We picked the 22nd for the walk the path event. Now that's, that's a nice, slow, casual day on the bike pass. And that's the day of the garage sales. So folks will be out there working the garage sales and hopefully some folks will be walking and slow riding their bikes on our bridges and bike paths. And, uh, the Bear Doer will bring in people who are not normal residents here. Part of this event, it's a 100-mile event, and it's sponsored and, and uh, promoted by our president, I am Roy Wilson. Mm -hmm. He's uh, got an event that goes all the way from the north ends of the uh, the, the city suburbs all the way down to and through Gross Hill. If you ride all of it, it's 100 miles. But he's got it split up into several separate events. You can participate in a, 
uh, what they call a centennial hundred, which is 62 kilometers or, or 62 miles or 100 kilometers. Or you can take a portion or any portion of it. It is an enrolled event. People that get into this event pay $36 for their privilege. But you get a, you get a shirt, you get a lunch, you get refreshments throughout the, uh, the ride. It's going to get a lot of press coverage in the city. And it's going to get a lot of press coverage here. So I, I know right now that there is in excess of 100 riders enrolled for the 100 mile event, which means that there's 100 riders that are going to ride Grosse Hills Roads. We have talked about routes, and the first route that they came up with was made, made little sense to me because the guy that set it up has never been to Grosse Hill. So, <laughs> or Grosse Isle, if you would. <laughs> So, so I talked about an alternative route to them, which puts them down Grosse Hill Parkway to Meridian. You make a left on Meridian, and you go to Macomb and make a right, and you can fly down Macomb mm -hmm. all the way to East River. Not a lot of houses there, and it's a slow traffic road. Now, the Bordeaux are not going to be in a gang. They're going to be twosies and threesies and foursies probably riding. When you get to East River, you will make a left-hand turn and run it to Bridge Road, or horse mill. We haven't decided which one yet. I suspect it will be horse mill because it's smoother. And horse mill will take us back to Meridian where you can hammer your way back to the to the Grosio Parkway and, and bring it to a right hand turn and off the island again. We will not use the toll bridge. And the people that uh, are going to be coming on the island, we committed to giving them some refreshments as they arrive here. And since we're having walked the path and lemonade and hot dogs and bottled water and uh, perhaps Wally singing to a guitar again, you know, that's enough to scare them all off the island, isn't it? Uh, we <laughs> might be able to we can make them drive faster. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that gives the business to the police department. Then. But uh, we use that as a refreshment spot. So with garage sales, bicycles, and walking the path, and, and this ought to really showcase our community. And I'm, I'm really excited for, for Wayne State for having the courage to start this. And I'm excited for us because we have a major part to play in it. Very happy to hear about that. I've also heard that uh, it's actually picking up sponsors as well now. Yep. Well, if you need any assistance specifically from us. Uh, well, I, I've been thinking about what we need to do for this, and I'm going to suggest that we get together, you, uh, Tom Malvesto and the, and the rec department, and Cliff St. Pierre and the Green Bay's Open Space Department, because they can play a part in passing out literature there f for their interests. We mm -hmm. can play a part in passing out our interests, and uh, certainly the Baradours will be interested. Uh, it's, it's kind of a neat thing. There's, there's a nice website that you can pick up and, and watch the Baradour event with some detail now. So mm -hmm. uh, just go to the Wayne State website and look up for Baradour. You need to help, have, help spell it, call me. <laughs> I've put the, uh, the link of that for that on our Facebook. Yes, you did. Yes, so you did. Come to think of it. That's all I can tell you about it right now. But I'm sure there's not more. I'm <laughs> sure there's not more. Well, did um, Wayne, start, Wayne State start this, or are they just part of this? They started it. Oh, good, good. This was, Roy Wilson is an avid bicyclist, mm -hmm. and his wife is also. I would not be surprised to see them buzzing through here. This is, you will recognize Roy Wilson. He's got black hair with a shock of white right here. And he's wearing his helmet, we won't. Well, you'll see it out the front of his helmet. <laughs> you know, he was so. on uh, WDET recently. He was uh, on WDET. He was also on Saturday on the... Uh, the replacement for Paul W. Smith on weekends. Oh, okay. That time. Yeah, really yeah. promoted it hard. Yeah, he, he specifically said that just about every weekend you know, he's going out to a different part of Michigan mm -hmm. to to ride the trails, to ride the roads, and you know, learning more about the great state. Very so, vibrant man. Mm -hmm. And you know, th these are the exact reasons why you know, you know we're encouraging folks you know to to make uh, Grozio more walkable and bikeable. Not only is it just for 
how fun walking and biking is and about the environmental benefits and everything, but it, it could potentially lead to green as well. And green meaning money, economic sure. development. Economic development, more people moving to the island, a younger uh, group of people that rides bicycles, not like me. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to get you on a trike, Wally. I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> it's not a bike. I'll, I'll tell you what, at the day of the event, I'll come down on my horse. <laughs> right? I got, I got a five liter horse in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on, we have uh, Wes here to talk a little bit more about the bridge restoration and uh, the cost estimate involved. Uh, for folks at home, uh, BPAC uh, met with Wes uh, earlier this month to talk a little bit more about the uh, bridges, which all need some care. We walked them and gave him some estimate, you know, some ideas of what type of things we were looking for, and he's going to report a little bit more on it now. Um, that's, um Last Friday, I met with um, Bill from Charlie, Charlie and Green's um, company, and we walked the entire bike path again together. Uh, he was concentrating on the asphalt, and then we walked the wood bridges jointly. Um, I don't know whether he, I guess he didn't include any of the wood stuff in his report. No, if you haven't gotten a copy of it, you can have it. Uh, if, it. if it's just the asphalt, it's, it really doesn't pertain that much. Some of the, the key things is that we know that we had that damage to the rail on Grow Road. Mm -hmm. uh, There's also three sections of um, railing on the thoroughfare bridge that has to be removed and replaced from um, winter damage. Broken spindles in there, so those sections would have to be disassembled and reassembled to put them back together. Um, the main um, main thing that I'm, I'm working on is uh, additional work that was over and above our, the normal wood stuff that we talked about when our, on our walkthrough, and that is on the Grill Road. He would like uh, made the suggestion would like to have the approach railing on the east side of the bridge removed, saw cut the asphalt in a U shape. Um, an 18 inch ribbon put around, tie the um, um, section that goes um, perpendicular to the, the walkway into the concrete abutment, and then we set the handrail post, the approach railing post, into brackets like they are on, on the rest of the railings of the bridges. That mm -hmm. And uh, build that um, back level. The, um, the north side is, has a frost heave to it, and then the south side, as we know, is falling away. And I put that um, couple um, retention boards in there. Um, again, that's not something that we really, as I mentioned, when we tie those two pieces together, they move differently, and they will have a tendency to come apart. Uh, this will eliminate that need and straighten up that, and readdress that entire thing. Um, we're going to be putting down a 42-inch footer of concrete in that U-shape scenario. Um, I believe, we both believe that there's nothing but busted concrete underneath that location. So what we will do is we will remove the asphalt. The broken concrete that we remove, we will leave on site as part of the retaining along the water edge, et cetera, that's already there. And then we'll just pour in new concrete and set in six new brackets uh, for the post. Um, we probably won't be able to reuse much of that railing that's there. Uh, so it'll probably be all new railing that will come in. The second um, item that was um, that pertained to um, the wood scope of work is on the Meridian Bridge. Um, foundations um, 15 and 16 going from south to north on the west side of the bridge have settled. And if you stand back on the bridge, you can see that little dip de doo I think, Brian, you would ask me why that one was, was down as well as that little curve. Well, the curve doesn't have much to do with it other than the wood, but that dip is the um, foundation that has dropped there. Um, the drop, it's probably only two and a half inches, really. But what um, what uh, was decided to do was to go down and uh, 
disconnect the beam from the vertical post, foundation post, um, jack the beam back level, and put some shims, metal shims, between the post and the beam, and then put in a new longer bracket, strap brackets on both sides of the beams to the existing post. We won't be able to reuse the, uh, the existing straps because the holes won't match up and we keep drilling multiple holes in there. I'm just going to deteriorate the thing, so I'd rather just get a new bracket, a new strap for, for those locations and use the existing holes. Um, and that's, um, that won't be able to take place until probably end of June due to the amount of water that sits in there. And it's usually about end of June when that thing dries out. So I can get down there with a, a plate and a, and a, a floor jack and um, raise that beam up. Mm -hmm. um, can't really do it in the water. It's just to be a, a, a mucky mess and won't work too well. Um, but because of those changes that he requested along those lines, um, and the fact that I didn't think he was looking for a finalized um, get-go until the next meeting, I do not have all the stuff put together for you yet. Um, Can you finish it up and just email it to Yes, I will. I, it should be done later this week. Okay. okay. Um, one of the other things you asked me, um, both last fall and then at our walkthrough, was what was the original price of the Meridian Bridge? And I told you I did find the locate the records that were in the in the storage paper storage. Um, the original price was thirty six thirty six thousand dollars to build that originally. That was back in nineteen ninety two or three, I think it was the year I found the, the records in. Um, you also asked me what I would think it would be to cost to replace that mm -hmm. today's dollar. You're probably looking at about 70000 Maybe a little bit less if we could reuse the concrete foundations. If we didn't have to pull those out as well, um, it would save us some money. But um, you're probably looking at about seventy. If we were to pull the decks and put the epoxy on those joists to to save them and uh, eliminate the punkiness to them and then put down deck bars again with about 50% salvage, we're probably looking at the order of 19, 18 and 19,000 to do that work. That's the bridge that has the most work needed, isn't it? Mm -hmm. No, that's the bridge that has the least amount of work needed as far as damage to it. You're talking about the Meridian Bridge? The Meridian across, I call the Meridian Bridge the one across from Meridian School. Okay, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I misunderstood you. Yeah, I call the uh, the law, the the MDOT Bridge, thoroughfare bridge, the right. one going over top of the, the, the thoroughfare. Right. And then, mm -hmm. um, then the Grove Road is Grove Road. So, um, oh, the other thing that, um, that Bill wanted me to price out and then what we was going to do it is um, do a, a couple, one or two test pilots and then see how it works. And that is on the grill row, the uh, 4x12 joists were never blocked. And um, if we block from the outside in two joists, one to two joists, and that's part of the trial here, how far we had to go over. Um, Bill thinks it, were it, were, it was stiffened it up. Um, it, may, it, it, it may not stiffen enough to justify the cost of doing it. And so um, we'll see what it is. I mean, obviously we're stiffening some, that just the pure mm -hmm. physics, we're stiffening it. But is it going to be justify the, the cost of crawling you there and try to get that blocking after the fact. Mm -hmm. um, and back to the Meridian Bridge, you, know, you said yeah. $70,000 to replace. Uh, That's basically it, building a new bridge with yeah. the same standards that you have there, uh, yeah. which we probably won't be able to do. We'll probably have to change the handrail, which will cost uh, uh, which is an additional mm -hmm. um, 
it's a higher price handrail with the with all the spindles okay. and stuff in there versus the rails that we have on there right now. Okay, so so conservative. I mean, a liberal estimate. You know, the low end it's going to be seventy thousand yeah. dollars. Um, epoxy. You know, would give it a little bit more life to the bridge at you know, around twenty thousand right. dollars. Now, how how much longer do you think that that epoxy solution would give us on the bridge? Because the epoxy solution will will be the last thing that will fail on the bridge then. Something else will go before the epoxy goes. Okay. Uh, well, if, if you ever use it, um, Dr. Rot is, is one manufacturer of it. It's a two-part epoxy. Give Rot. Yep, Give Rot's another. Um, once you put it in, Brian, and it sets up, um, it's hard. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's harder than the original wood. Okay. It's, it's so, often used for stringers on boats. Where you can't tear apart the whole bolt and replace the, the entire stringer, you, yes. you expose the, the rotted stringer and then you you form it in and, and pour this get rot into it, mm -hmm. and you can drive a bulldozer into yeah. it. You won't exactly. It. You know, it's just so, it's very strong. So this bridge, you know, the marine bridge has the least amount of actual degradation to it, aside from the um, two two uh, foundation uh, that have settled. Mm -hmm. uh, this past winter. I, I guess what I was looking at, I know that originally you're saying that if we do nothing, you know, the, the do nothing alternative for the Meridian Bridge, we're getting maybe five more years out of it. I, I gave you a five year estimate. It might be longer, Brian. I, mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not up here trying to give you a doomsday on this thing. Um, as we end up replacing, we as a township ends up replacing deck boards throughout the, the years, you can check the the, the integrity of the stringer. Mm -hmm. At some point, the stringer is going to give way where the the fasteners just won't hold anymore. Mm -hmm. And I guess I guess I was just wondering for the stringer and the other components. You're just a ballpark estimate. You know, do you think that's going to be only five years as well, or do you think that might be more like fifteen or twenty years? I just what I, got. I have no way no way of knowing. Um, okay. There was water in there, and I'll be honest, Billy and I, neither one was, was too interested in crawling underneath there to look at the um, mm -hmm. vertical post on Friday. Um, but knowing from history, knowing that um, back in 90, what was it, 98, 99, we had a tree fall up there, if you guys recall. And it's the Grove Road Bridge. And the, uh, no, on... On the Meridian School we've Bridge, had one, we've had them fall on both bridges. Yeah, and we had we had a big windstorm. A tree came down, did some damage. Um, we had to replace a little bit of handrail, um, but we ended up replacing um, one of the vertical posts. We again went down there. We jacked up the beam, disassembled the, the straps, jacked the beam, replaced the vertical post because it's held in with um, two bolts and a, and a bracket mm -hmm. and a concrete footer. Um, Replaced it, put it back together, and that's it. The, the, that bridge um, is is like a is like a little box. It's it's, it's totally modular. The way is the way it was designed and put together. You can replace pieces relatively easily. I don't think the the uh, six by eight cross beams are in any danger of going anywhere. The next thing that will fail will be your vertical eight by eight post. They will finally have enough water, dampness, dried back and forth over the years that they will finally give out, start giving up where the bolts are and, and the brackets. Mm -hmm. When that would be, I, I can't give you a... a well, I don't think that, that it's fair to you to, to try to put out the minutiae to us yeah. mm -hmm. tonight. I think, I think you still need to sit down and draw us a picture and... Put an estimate on it. Yes, yeah, that's, that's then you'll have the estimate for for the additional scope of work that um, but what that I Rains think came up with um, by what, the end of the week. What I think you're saying and what I'm hearing is that the bridges are going to cost a little bit money to put back in shape again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we'll figure out how much that is once we got your once we've got your paper. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, um, th those two main things that came up on Friday was one of the main reasons um, I came down to the meeting tonight. If I thought it would be in his report, he didn't put it in, so that's it. But it was something over and above what the three of us talked about when we did our walkthrough. That's fine. Let's you know, let's okay. get us a 
something on paper. Okay. And, yeah. and I don't think anybody's going to hold your feet to the fire on this paper. Oh, no, no. no. It, 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 it'll be it. fine. It was just, um, you know, there was a couple of things that I, uh, that I had back in the long-term storage that Brian asked for that I had the time to go back and dig out. So I want to give him that information okay. and, um, and go from there. And thank you so much for the information. I apologize if I sound like I'm you know, coming across grilling you about uh, the specific time frames. It just when you say that you know seventy thousand dollars to replace the bridge and only you know twenty thousand to put this epoxy, it sounds very tempting. So just wondering, you know, is, you know, is it um, is it the better alternative if we're picking one between the other? If it's going to buy us a number of years, is so it, it, that it's like any time you use a. Uh, that thing you're putting you're fixing one thing but you it's not the same as a new bridge and something else just like um uh antique car you, you fix the alternator and the um transmission drops okay. out of it the next year it's you know sure <laughs> okay. let's not even talk about that yeah. the, so the, thank you very much i appreciate right. it thanks very much no problem you, you spent a lot of time with this committee and uh, this committee appreciates it all right new business for you, you should have the, the RINGS report on path maintenance. This was given to us this afternoon, so I apologize that you're going to have a additional time to review it. Um, I think you know, we'll probably need to go into a study session and look into this more detail. I know that we're, um, we've got a lot to accomplish tonight. But you know, I guess in, in summary, it looks like the, the RINGS report was estimating about $110,000. Um, for just the pavement work um, on South Point, Grow, and Meridian Roads. And that's not including any of the, the bridge repairs that uh, Wes has been mentioning. So it, it looks like we do have you know, a lot of work that could be done. Um, and we're gonna have to try and figure out a way to pay for this. So, I mean, if anyone has any initial questions about this, I mean, we can talk about it real quick, but I'd encourage us probably to spend more time on this than we can right now. I'm going to make a motion that we have a dedicated study session just for us. I would suggest that you add to your recommendation that we have a township engineer there. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. And also we can use our own time to check out the path and check <coughs> off the list so we know what to talk about instead of what? Uh, yeah, I think some pictures would be time. great too. Okay, I can do that. I, I don't know if they took pictures or not, but I do know the way that they do this survey. They get a golf cart from the from the golf course and they ride it. You know, mm -hmm. ride ride the entire path. There's a lot. There's a lot of interesting things in this, and uh, should come as no surprise to you that several of these spots need slurry coating again, seal coating. Mm -hmm. And if you flip on the back side, it's talking about seal coating the meridian path. 24,100 square yards, that's a lot of seal coat. Mm -hmm. $30,000 a seal coat. But what does it do for the, for the path? It makes it last another three to five years. So, so th these are worthwhile investments. I, I would suggest that the committee do exactly what Alan said. Take it home, look it over. If you want to, if you want to ride these paths and look at them yourself, go right ahead. Use this as your guideline, and then come back, and we'll we'll pick a date when we can have uh, Bill Bettendorf or somebody like that at our meeting, and he can answer questions. Make sense? Sounds good to me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I'll add in there. Um, this is just related to maintenance. Been riding the horse mill path, and there's edge cracking on that. Uh, there, there's some other work that looks like it could benefit from. So I, I hate saying it, but looks like you know, we're going to have to you know, start thinking about maintenance for the horse mill path as well. The edge path, or the edge cracking, is something that you're going to see in virtually the entire bike path system. Mm -hmm. When they roll these things out, they roll an edge which is thin. It just comes out thin because of the way that it's built. And that's where it's going to crack, right on the edges. Uh, seal coating fills up a lot of that. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't get excited about it. Just just because it has a crack in it doesn't mean that it's failing. The, the guts of the system, the center of that path is a st strong, sound path. Yeah. But we're coming to the point where we're going to have to seal coat that one, too. Mm -hmm. uh, not this year. Next year. Yep. 
and you hit the nail on the head, it's like preventative maintenance. Yep. You know, making sure that we keep the horse mill path in good shape. Well, that's that was the whole purpose for all of this, if you remember. We can't just walk away from this stuff and then wait for it to fall to pieces and then, then expect to rebuild it in one season. We don't have the money or the, or the expertise to do that. But if we can get into that system where we can seal coat it this year and then two years from now maybe we'll resurface that section and then we'll go up to, to this point and we might resurface another area. Uh, we'll keep it in great shape. You know these bike paths, I'm getting on my horse. These bike paths are one of the greatest assets that this community has. I have, you know anybody know Pat Nielsen? Yep. Pat, Pat said at our last Greenways Up in Space, I just want to tell you guys that it was so swell to get up in the morning when we had that real bad snowstorm and know that I could exercise because I couldn't drive my car on the street, but I could run the bike path. It was clean. That's the difference between us and Wayne County. We're taking care of our stuff. Mm -hmm. And you know, when it comes to going for a millage, and that's what Erin is after, and she's right, I believe we'll get support for a maintenance millage. So let's get going now. Maybe for this year. <laughs> Um, I sent everybody an email. We had talked about what past millage language looked like, and I found it in um, the News Herald. So that, I mean, I, I don't know how much that, that helps us. just gives us a little bit of history. Um, I don't think we're ready to talk amounts tonight, obviously, and that'll be a, a discussion. I think once we have more information from Wes and from Rains and, you know, stronger estimates, we can talk about an amount. Um, but I guess, Wally, what is, how, how do we go about doing this? How do you go about doing it? Well, number one, you've got to broach the subject, right? Yes. We have to figure out what we need the millage for. We know how much money we have left and how much money it's going to take to whip this bike pass into shape right now. $110,000. Then we've got to think about the money for the bridges. And I don't know what that figure is going to be. You know, is it going to be $20,000? Is it going to be 40000 I don't know that. Mm -hmm. And we won't know that until Wes gives us a, that, that figure. But let's just face it that, you know, we don't, after we spend that $140,000, $150,000, we better keep twenty grand in the bank so that in case we have an emergency on the, this system, we'll have funding for maintenance of it. But go back, going back to my opening statement, we got to get this estimate in front of the township board and say, this is what needs to be done. But after this, we are out of money. We're going to have to ask for a maintenance village. And I believe that our township supervisor and our township board members are very supportive of our bike pass, and they will work towards getting us uh, an appropriate millage. So I don't know what an appropriate millage is. You see right now we've got a $110,000 estimate plus whatever comes in on these bridges. The bridges aren't going to happen every year at that, at that magnitude. But there is going to be a yearly washing and sealing, which is shame on us, something we haven't done. We've been going three and four years without cleaning and, and, and protecting them, and that's just making them deteriorate faster. I'd go as far as to say that some of that punking occurred because if they had some, some preservative leaked down in there, it might not have gotten to this point. It, it, would, it would help. It, it would not a guarantee, but a supposition. So. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, as, as we start looking at this thing, we're saying we're going to spend $125,000, right? Do we need $125,000 a year in a millage? If we do, what does it take? Looks like a half a mill raises uh, $295,000. Mm -hmm. We don't need $295,000 a year to maintain our system. Mm -hmm. We need half of that. So maybe a quarter mill. But the other question is, if we're going with a non-motorized plan and we want to look at implementing other projects as well, you know, then you're you asking for a capital budget, yep. not a maintenance budget. Oh, for sure. But that's, you, know, you that's got want to keep both in mind that if we're going to be asking for money for maintenance, we don't want to get too greedy on that and then you know, shoot ourselves in the foot by you know, having too much in the maintenance budget and not enough for potential construction projects as well. well we're not, those are two separate issues. 
You can't use maintenance budget for construction, and you can't use construction budget for maintenance. So you'd have to ask separately. Exactly. And then you're going to have to develop what you want to do in a non-motorized plan to tell the, the township board, this is what we want, this is what we think we want, this is what we think it's going to cost. We would like to have your support for a construction budget for non-motorized. Exactly. But this is not, non I'm asking for maintenance here, mm -hmm. not a penny for construction. Can they be two separate millages yes. then, is what you're yeah. saying? Okay. They have to be two separate yeah. millages. And all, I, all I'm saying is, let's just keep in mind that we're going to be asking probably for a construction millage in the future too. That's all. I totally understand that we're not going to be using maintenance funds in order to do construction projects. And nothing is going to be even proposed about being constructed until we have an, a full non-motorized plan. That, there you go. You don't, you don't buy it. Ask for the money to get a plan. You, you put out the plan and then ask for Exactly. The All right. And we, we agree with that. Mm -hmm. Is there strategy to if we go in with another group or when it gets on the ballot, or should we just, as soon as we need it? Yeah, you know, you're going to have an election in November again. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we have the time to get it on the ballot by then. Mm -hmm. That may be a spring election, uh, spring millage. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let, let me find out. I don't have that answer right at my fingertips either. Okay. But uh, I don't think you should wait two years. Mm -hmm. I don't think you should spend all your money and then go to the township board and say they're all falling apart. We don't have a millage. What do we do? Because mm -hmm. you would play hell getting money that way. <laughs> so let, let's ask our township's residents if they will continue to fund to repair our township's bank bus. That's what it's about. Mm -hmm. You're looking at me like you got something to say, Alan. No, I'm just trying to timeline everything. And I would think that... Um, we're going to have a strong commitment towards the maintenance through this year. Um, I just don't think we can mix getting done what we need to do, get done in maintenance and turn around and push forward a, some type of millage. It's just uh, we're spreading ourselves too thin and we're not going to do the kind of work we need to do. Are, are you talking about uh, construction millage? Is it, no, is it any millage, millage we consider. Uh, whatever we decide, we need, what direction we need to go. I just don't want to be pulled so thin that we're not going to get it done in, for a timeline in the fall time, and mm -hmm. uh, it, it'll affect the credibility of the millage. Yeah. Well, well let's not worry about the, the, mm -hmm. the exact timeline for the millage. It's just let's keep thinking that we need to be moving forward with that. Um, the reason why I say that is you know, the next item on the agenda here is about the DPS meeting, Department of Public Services. Uh, I've been talking with Mr. Kostick, and he has invited our commission to come to the June 9th meeting. At that meeting, they're going to be talking about different road improvements. You know, a lot of them are going to be on local roads where there's probably not going to be any need for um, specific bicycle pedestrian infrastructure. It's probably good the way it is because there's so, you know, such low traffic volumes and low traffic speeds. Uh, but they might be talking about other issues as well where there might be more bang for your buck that we could piggyback projects off each other. And I know that they're going to be looking for a millage as well. Uh, specifically for East River moving forward. So, you know, we can talk a little bit more about it then. Again, mm -hmm. I understand your concerns, um, and I understand that, you know, we, we need to have this maintenance budget, but, you know, we can just keep thinking about it and moving a little bit forward each month on it. So, any questions about that? Is so everyone going to be able to make it? I don't know have to look. Okay. I can't commit to it either yet without looking. Okay. Um, moving forward, I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on Iron Bell Trail. For those of you who don't know, the Iron Bell Trail is the trail that the governor's office has been talking about. It used to be uh, called the Showcase Trail. It's going from Ironwood, Ironwood in the western part of the UP to Belle Isle in the city of Detroit. There's actually two different routes. Um, one of them is a primarily biking route, and the other one is uh, primarily a hiking route. I actually have a flyer over here for it. Um, um, and so the, the hiking route is more on the, the west side of the state, but it comes through in Washtenaw County and utilizes the border-to-border -border trail, connects into the downriver-linked greenway system, which is in southern Wayne County, and comes up Jefferson. And it actually, you know, there is a, a specific call-out for the Groziel option. I'm going to zoom in over there so you see it talked about this in the past. Um, what's unique about this 
is that you know, Grozio, the Grozio option is only one of two different spots where there's an optional part of the trail. The only other spot is in Mackinac Island. So what makes this unique is that in general, the path is just linear. You go from one spot to the other. Um, and it, you know, the end point for the uh, and beginning point are the same. Any other community that's outside of the main line, they're called spurs, and they're not eligible for specific funding for the Iron Bell Trail. Um, but options are. So there is a potential grant opportunity for uh, coming up for uh, improvements to uh, fill in the gaps within the Iron Bell Trail. So I'll share that information with you too uh, shortly. But I just thought I'd let you guys know about that update and that things are moving forward on that. Um, in our, you know, SEMCOG, the Southeast Michigan Council of Governments, is looking to partner with the Department of Natural Resources on promoting the Iron Belt Trail. So, you know, throughout the year, they're going to be programming, you know, they're going to have different events on the BDNR's website because there's a web page specifically for the Iron Belt Trail. So all the se sections that are existing, they could, if there's... Uh, events happening on them, the, the state of Michigan wants to know about them. So Mer the Meridian Path is part of the Iron Bell Trail. So our, our Walk the Path event, we could potentially put that you know, on the state website and get more advertising out of that. Mm -hmm. So any of these events that we're talking about moving forward, you know, we can build a critical mass and you know, help support this trail, help support Grozeal. Any questions on that stuff? How long of a period do you think this will take to complete? Um, Long-term plan or is relatively short? Relatively short. The governor wants to have the whole thing done in two to three years. Wow. It's a very ambitious goal, to say the least. And I'm not sure specifically what, you know, if um, you know, most of the, for the hiking trail, they're looking at pedestrian-specific infrastructure, so shared use side paths or sidewalks or independent trails. Um, our route on uh, Rosalia actually goes onto East River as well, and I don't know if we're going to be able to have you know, a full, you know, well, definitely don't have enough room for a path. I'm not sure if we'd have enough room for a sidewalk. More than likely, if there's going to be anything, it's going to be on road. So devil's in the detail on that. But since it's already here on the map, I think we got a little bit of wiggle room, and we might be able to um, you know, flex our muscle a little bit on that. All right. I think the last item that we have before moving into applicant interviews would be uh, the discussion of Island Fest. Jane, you requested that we put that on there. Would you like to begin the discussion? Yeah, I was thinking we need to do the Island Fest booth. You can, um, like you suggested, uh, bike registration maps, uh, my lady ride, just to show the public that we're here. And we have so many things going on in the future, so I think we should have a booth. Mm -hmm. Okay. I believe we did have a booth planned uh, already. Alan, do you know, did we register anything yet? I, I've registered. We are registered for a booth. Okay. Cool. We don't know the location, but um, we'll see if we can get a good one. Okay. So maybe in between now and next meeting, we can meet uh, in person a couple of us or converse via email about specific things that we'd like to accomplish with the Island Fest booth. Okay. Um, last item I had on our agenda was applicant interviews for our commission. What I'd like to do is first go into reports in closing because um, I prefer to have applicant interviews off the air. That way they can be a little bit more candid. Is everyone okay with that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, is there any other upcoming rides or runs to publicize that we don't know about yet? Okay. Wally, anything else with the liaisons report? Well, I told you about the, the three events on August 22nd. You know about the fountain being installed next week. Uh, as far as other activities re in, the, in the immediate future, uh, May 2nd and May 3rd will be the Island's Dump the Junk, Find a Treasure event, the Woody Clark Special. 
<laughs> and you know what? The guy fills, what, 20 dumpsters, Donna? He fills 20 dumpsters, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and what he's done this last couple of years, he's put out uh, all of the scrap money and has donated it to an island community or an island uh, nonprofit. I think he's donated to the animal shelter and he's, you know, Nice of that. And the guys from Greenway's Open Space, there's, there's only four of them right now. They, they man this thing and they take care of business. Uh, and you can get rid of a lot of your trash that day. If you have tires, you can't leave them out in front. You've got to put them, you take them down to the, the island fest. Now, I've been working on an alternative for electronics uh, because we did have an e-waste event last year but the, the same company will not do it this year. We just did not have enough. So we're working on an alternative, and maybe by the end of the year we'll have a, a permanent site for um, waste. But on um, May 2nd in Flat Rock, you could take the rid of the electronics in Flat Rock, Hypo. Is that electronics, or is that yeah, uh, hazardous waste? Paint. That's Light hazardous bulb. waste. E-waste and hazardous yeah. waste? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Didn't know that. Wally, could you clarify the dump the junk date for our minutes? Yeah, May 2nd and May 3rd. It's a Saturday, Sunday, coming up. Where they dump it down here? Where, where they dump it? It's at the township DPW yard. Okay. Bring your stuff down there. You don't want any cement. Uh, we can't accept an electronics because we don't have a current outlet for it. There will be no hazardous wastes or oils or paints accepted there. Mm -hmm. But uh, you got an old couch or an old set of tires or... Some some rotten wood in your yard that you want to put into a dumpster, bring it on down. Final thing is that this Thursday night, Pat Somerville will be giving a presentation at our township board right in this room on Proposition 1 and his opinion of it. Uh, it will be televised, but uh, there's plenty of room for people to come and, and, and see him in person. He's, a, he's quite an engaging speaker. I don't know if you have to agree or disagree with him. He, he's rather articulate, and he's real passionate about about his constituents. So uh, if you can, look in at him or stop in and see him. Thank you. Uh, for Chairperson's report, I just have two items. Uh, first is I learned that the city of Flat Rock is putting in uh, a bike rental system, uh, Zagster, same type of system that is in place in the city of Wyandotte, as well as in the city of Detroit, which in Detroit, it's a, a transitional system. They'll be moving over to their own you know, larger bike share system in the future. Um, but based on that, and I know that folks on this commission as well as uh, other uh, residents have asked us about potential bike rentals. I'll be trying to find out a little bit more information about that. Uh, I've been meeting with uh, Downriver Linked Greenways, and it sounds like you know, if not, several communities already have these systems, that maybe there's some potential about you know cost sharing if we're going to you know, uh, be a part of it and maybe it could make sense you know i wouldn't want to commit to anything that or even commit to recommending anything that you know, until i you know was able to see that it's feasible and it makes sense for Rosio. but i know it's been talked about so i want to do due diligence and uh you know find out more information about it uh the second item is that as i mentioned before some call the southeast michigan council of governments is putting together um you know, activities going on on the Iron Belt Trail, and they're trying to uh, get a list of contacts for each community. Um, personally, since I work for SEMCOG, I would prefer not to be the main contact for uh, Grozeal. So I was going to ask, you know, what, who would be the main contact? Should it be here on BPAC? And uh, that question I'll, I'll give to Wally. And secondly, if it is on BPAC, is there anyone else that would be interested in you know, serving in that capacity? Our township uh, supervisor, Brian Loftus, is our official emissary to SEMCOG, and I'm his alternate. Mm -hmm. I've never had to be his alternate yet. He's pretty passionate about getting there. But, uh, you know, either I or anybody, anybody on this committee that would be interested in it. Okay. I will send an email to Loftus, CC, you and the rest of the commissions, mm -hmm. see who wants to do it. That's all I have. Is there any other comments, questions, concerns before we close the, uh, the televised portion of this meeting? Yep. Can I get a motion? Motion to adjourn. Okay, second. Aye. Jane? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Aye.
walk, bike, and drive safe.